Can you give some folks quick tips to get started with video? Because that is something I have failed repeatedly to do. Yeah. Okay. So my quick tips is one, use your phone. The phones are amazing. Like I have the, I always buy the Max Pro for an iPhone because you have the three cameras and you can do like a cinematic. So it's like blurry in the background and you're in focus. Mm -hmm. Such an easy tool. You literally always have it on you all the time. So there's no excuse. Today, we've got Sherry Barna with Purple Bean Media. Cool name, by the way. This lady has forgotten more about content creation, social media, and SEO than I have learned up to this point. That's why we have her on here for you. She answers a ton of smart questions, and she tells us how to repurpose the content we have, make our lives easier, and to make more sales. Do more by doing less. With me, Charles Alexander, for small business owners, startups, and busy folks. Tell me again, how did we come up with the name Purple Bean Media? The name, I wish I had a cool story, but it's just random letters strung together, basically, because I, <laughs> when I started the business, I was working somewhere else and I wasn't necessarily looking to start a business, but I was thinking about maybe doing it. I jumped into a meeting, a networking meeting, and people were like, oh, what's your business name? What's your website? And I had nothing because it was just like a thought at that point. So when I went home, I didn't know too much about SEO and how to do it myself. And I had mm -hmm. no budget because this was like a really on the whim thing. True. So I'm like, I need True. something that doesn't exist that if people Google it, I'm yeah. coming up. So Purple Ooh. Bean Media was born. Don't like the color purple. Don't own anything purple. <laughs> it's just like so many things. I'm like, why? Why did I choose that? It's so yeah. random. But yeah, it's there no now. So. Well, it looks cool. I mean, the, the site's gorgeous. Yeah, nobody else is going to be Purple Bean. I had to... Mine is your Charles Alexander, all one word, because there's nobody mm -hmm. else like that. I've said this before. This dude will probably kill me. But if you go to charlesalexander.com, it is a person in Tennessee. In fact, he's 20 miles down the road, but it's a Malaysian country singer. Uh, I, he, I did he, see him because I looked you up one day. I can't remember what I was doing. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is definitely not the Charles Alexander yeah. I'm looking for. I've got to have him on this podcast one day so he can, he, he can tell me all about the wonderful things I do and maybe... I think I'm sure I'm not mischaracterizing because I listened to his music just to make sure to see what I would sound like if I picked up singing. And, you know, I'd be pretty good. Apparently, it did's all right. So in thinking, that's a great point you're just bringing up there. And, you know, for anybody watching, listening, Sherry is my go to for all things SEO, social content, online, creating content. What are some things in talking about that, that people just straight up don't know, don't understand when it comes to SEO? You were talking about, you jumped into this with <laughs> some background in it, but still didn't know. What, what do I not know? Tell me. So when it comes to SEO, I think the biggest misconception is that people, you just have to have the keyword one time on your website and everyone's going to find you for it. <laughs> and that's just not true. SEO, first of all, it takes a while to do. It's a strategy that you kind of, it's a time consuming strategy. I always say like give a six months because you're not okay. going to see movement in month one or two. Usually, of course, there are cases where sometimes you do, but generally like you're just trying to build a strategy that's, it's a little more time consuming. So that's misconception number one. And number two is this is just a mistake in my opinion that people make. We are in our own businesses. So we talk like how the other people in our business talk, right? right? We have our own words and phrases, but the everyday person isn't searching like how we talk in our industry speak. They're not saying so, subject matter expert. Exactly. So a lot of people will like have all these keywords on their website. That is true to the business. They are keywords, but it's not what people are searching for. I'm always saying, okay, I'm going to do my own research because they're like, oh, I want this keyword, that keyword, whatever. And I'm like, okay, let me do my own research here mm -hmm. because you might search like that and your colleagues might search like that, but regular Joes aren't. That's really important too. If the industry speak, I think kills business. I couldn't tell you the number of guys I've worked with. I've got a ton of business coaching clients, a lot of them in financial insurance, whatever. And mm -hmm. if you just look at the language on their website, oh my gosh, in terms of it being full of all the consonants and syllables and your long-term time horizon and your investment strategy with diversification. Like I've had a lot of cocktails on my back porch. Zero percent of people have ever used the word time horizon. They say, I want to retire one day. How long will that take? So in looking at it from that view, where does a Joe Schmo like me figure out? You said you could do some research. Where do I do the research? 
It's both. So I'll say to the people, okay, what do you want to be found for? What are your keywords? What is your business about? And then I do my own because I want to know who are people actually using those keywords? Mm -hmm. What's your competitors doing? Just like things like that, that I just do on my own. Because again, like we see our business, we know it so well, that sometimes it's hard to get that overarching view. And I want to make sure the traffic's actually there too. Right. So like, are you, anyway, are you checking you know, like a, a Google trend page or I don't know, like people on? actually searching the keyword. So sometimes it could be like, for instance, purple bean media. Again, it means absolutely nothing, which is why organically I come up because that phrase means nothing. So for me to do an SEO strategy behind that, when no one's actually searching that mm -hmm. phrase would kind of be ridiculous. I want to do keywords like social media management, SEO strategy or SEO website design, whatever, because people n might not be searching for me. They're probably searching for someone who can help them. Right. And they don't know who I am yet. So they might just be like, hey, I need someone to do a video or whatever mm -hmm. the service is. So that's the key when it comes to so, uh, SEO. You want to be known for your service more than like your name. Where do I find what people are searching? You're cutting out a little bit. I'm going to switch. I don't know if it's my internet. I'm going to switch to my phone. Okay. To see, I'm not really sure because I'm having a hard time understanding what you're saying. Could be my slow southern drawl. Ooh, she froze up. Oh. Okay. How's that? Look good, sound good. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's like the weather or the office, like, but yeah. You got fuzzy for a minute, but you're back. You weren't Sasquatch at all. Which is a real fear I have. Everybody always thinks, I just got a fuzzy picture of Sasquatch. Maybe he's just an out-of-focus monster running around. I stole that from somewhere. I can't remember. Maybe Mitch Hedberg. So how do I find... Um, let me make sure I'm asking this right. How do I... Where do I go to look to see what people are searching for other than me just Googling it? Yeah. When you Google something, for me, this is like a free little hack everyone can do. Google, say, your industry or whatever your keyword might be and then if you scroll down you know how google has like suggested phrases I those are keywords that. that google ah. is saying hey people are looking for this like they're looking for this but also this so you have like six or eight right off the bat where you could start targeting it just hands those. it right to you on a silver platter yeah exactly Sweet. it's not it's not crazy rocket science or anything and then we do <laughs> have some paid subscriptions and softwares that we use that yeah. show us why google is just a gold mine of information you just have to know where to look so in looking at, I've got, all right, start tightening up my SEO. It's not an overnight strategy. It's six months. I've heard you say a, a gajillion times, which is a real word I made up, that you need your own content and it can't just be posted once and forget it. So many people get overwhelmed and get frustrated. In fact, we just had a little workshop here. We're talking about all the different ways to create content, Instagram, TikTok. You know, one of the guys there, rightfully so, said, I just don't have the time. I get overwhelmed to make something and it flies through the doom scrolling and never to be seen again. So take me to square one. What is a smart content creation strategy? Okay. I you know people get really frustrated because it's like you spend 10 minutes or an hour yeah. doing this like, great content and then people scroll right by it. I <laughs> always say my strategy is twofold. One, I repurpose everything. So I told my story about how I became a business owner. I'm going to tell that a bunch of times. And uh, like, I just repeat, repeat, repeat. When I talk about SEO, it's going to be always the same thing. You need your keywords, do your keyword research, make sure you want to be known for this, make sure you have it, whatever, all my things, right? Sure. And then I'll come back in a few months and I'll focus again on SEO. I'll do a different type of video, but it, it, the basics are still there. So repurposing saves a lot of time. And sometimes I'll literally take the video that did really, really well and repost it again. And because it just is a time saver. Otherwise I spend, I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. Okay. So to my left, when I had the widescreen, I could see it, but I have a client where we're doing all the content creation. So mm -hmm. we have a blog at the top from that blog. We can break it down to tweets, sure. cool sayings or whatever. So you have your big content and then you break it down. My blog's on top. And then from there, we might do a video uh, talking about the exact same thing. And then, so for me, say it was how to like get to page one on Google. All right. I'll, I'll do the video first because I rather speak it out. Do yes. my video. From there, I type up a blog. So sometimes it's only 500 words. Sometimes I do a bigger blog and it might be 1500 words depending on timing. And then that's my two big pieces of content. From there, I do kind of like a breakdown. So I'll take three pieces from the video and make it into a reel. 
I'll take quick one-liners from the video or from the blog, and that's going to be my tweet. And then I take a picture of the tweet and I Ooh. post it on Instagram. That's like just quick pieces of content. Right. You do your research, you do the heavy lifting, and then everything else you're just pulling from that one thing. So ideally, if you could do one a week, that would be great. So you have your big topic and then you just pull, 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 pull. In reality, I know what I want to say professionally and like as an industry leader, here's what you mm -hmm. need to do. I'm also a practicing business owner. So I also right. know I have other things to do. I have clients to keep happy. I have bills to pay. I have employees to like talk to and all that kind of stuff. So that's my ideal that. situation. Ideal situation is like, I have these two beautiful big pieces of content and then I break them down. And some weeks I do that. Most weeks I don't. So <laughs> I, right now I'm like, oh, I'm doing a podcast. I'm going to set my camera up and I'm right. going to do it quick, but that's going to be a reel. I'm just going to pull like 10 seconds from it or 30 seconds. Boom. My reel's done. We have our cameras all the time with us. Use them. So I'm always early for meetings. I hate being late. So there's a lot of reels. If you notice, I'm in my car because I have like 15 minutes to spare because for mm -hmm. some reason, although I knew it was only 10 kilometers away, I thought it would take half an hour to get there. I'll just be like, okay, what's going on? And I might just be like, oh, you know what? I got these two questions in the last week. I'm going to talk about, you know, what time's the best time to post on Instagram or something like that. It's just like, make it really, really easy for yourself. And it's all about saving time. For me, the time savers are when I have time to kill, I, I'll quickly jump on and film something. Sure. And ideally, it's when I actually carve out creative time and I'm like, here's my blog, here's my video, here's my small pieces, and I'm done for the week or two. You said 10 kilometers. And when I was in the third grade, they tried to get us to move to the metric system, which made all the sense in the world because all you're doing is moving a decimal point. Awesome. Yeah. And we <laughs> couldn't do it. We said, no, I'd rather learn very random numbers and random words and then cram them together. And we stuck with that because that's how we roll. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. Let me ask, is this a, a good strategy tying these two things together? Because I often get folks say, well, I don't know what content to create. And I've kind of used, stolen a little bit what you were talking about. I tell people, what are the most commonly asked questions? And you're, yeah. you just laid it out perfectly. You know, go to Google. When you type in a question, it's going to give you 10 more. And if you click on one of those, it'll give you 10 more, 10 more. Yeah. And then you've got your own experience. But what you're saying is to take, I'm guessing, taking these SEO questions and then, well, let's just answer them and answer them creatively, but you're doing it first in a video. And then you can take that video, break it down into the blog and all the, all the fun and brilliant ways you said, is that some of the things you're doing? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. So if it's not Google, I listen to people. Like I was on a call today and someone's like, Hey, you know, I might want to hire you for SEO. I'm doing this, 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 I'm a little confused. And I was just like, Oh, okay. That's a common it's a common question I get. It's like a common theme. I kind of put that away. Sometimes I actually write it in my phone mm -hmm. and that's what I talk about. Because again, in our business, I would love to talk about some of the technical stuff that I learned. I'm like, oh my gosh, Google, my business just did this. It's so interesting. A, it's not interesting to anyone else except like my little <laughs> geeky friends. Yeah. B, it's too technical. If you don't know the basics, then it's going to like 100% go over your head. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to keep everything top of funnel. What do most people want? Like what are most people questioning? And that's kind of what I think about. And I watch my own habits too. I'm working out with this girl who is like a trainer, but she's also a fitness, I mean, like a nutrition coach. Right. And the other day I had a question about protein. And, she, and I know this is boring. I know she answered it a billion times already, but I'm like, how much protein should I be eating? And she's sure. like, oh, this, this, this. I didn't know that though. But she's like, oh my gosh, I already talked about this like a billion times. Sure. But I'm like, well, if everyone's asking that, that's the kind of content you need to create. What was her answer? It's like one gram of protein for every pound you weigh. Now, did she say pound or she say kilogram? Pound, I believe. Yeah, because it's really, really hard. <laughs> it's so hard to get that's, that much. Dude, do you know how much? It, that's whatever. Side note, that's what I've always read. Do you know what you have to consume to get that much protein? It's so hard. I, I don't even think I've <laughs> ever hit that before. It's like I try and have a protein shake because that's 30 right off the bat. Right. And then I add like Greek yogurt. So that's another whatever. And then yeah. it's constant eating. No wonder you yeah. lose weight because you're so full. The first time I started, I was like, I'm going to go strict. I'm not a strict person. So I like quickly like drop that after a week. But I'm like, oh, all I'm doing is eating. It's so <laughs> annoying. I've it's eaten so three whole chickens today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so <laughs> tedious. It's just like, I, I would set my alarm because my one coach was like, you don't eat enough. You got to eat every two to three hours. I'm like, okay, no problem. And then, oh my gosh, am I even going to be able to work? I was working in a flow state. Beep, beep, beep. You need to eat. And I'm like, ah. you're talking about creating all these different bits of content. And one thing I've, I've really focused on lately, and it's 
thank God it's starting to come to fruition after 16 years of this. I just come out with a book. I should have 15 books. Unfortunately, I don't. Yeah. What do you talk to clients about in terms of saving these bits of content and turning them to an actual asset? And by asset, I mean a guide, a checklist, a whatever, a full on ebook. Is that something that you've been looking at doing more of or do you do that? Yeah, I do do that. So I count YouTube as an asset, whenever it's long form. For instance, I had one client and she was kind of in the area. I'm like, oh, she's like, oh, I'll be in your area in a week. I'm like, oh, for what? Because she's from Toronto. She's like, oh, I'm speaking at this event. I was like, hello, this is the kind of stuff we need from you. I'm like, where? tell me the day and time because we're going to be there. We recorded her and of course made the little content and did all mm -hmm. that like, funnel type stuff, like dripping stuff. But this is a good asset. Like this, let's just save this for now. You can and keep it. Yeah, we just keep it. So I have a Dropbox full of tons of content and when they're ready, it's there. And for the people who are more proactive and they're like, okay, I want to start creating a content, whether it's like an ebook or whatever, it's like, okay, here, here's what you talk about. Here's what gets the most traction. Here's what people love. These right. are good 10 chapters. So you can break it down like that because the data will tell you what people are interested in. And looking at that, and you're talking about going back, you said, you know, maybe create a video and then you break it down to a blog and everything else. I've got folks that even though I have for years created video, my own video, explainer videos, made a whole business out of it, they're still rocking and rolling. Can you give some folks quick tips to get started with video? Because that is something I have failed repeatedly to do. Yeah. Okay. My quick tips is one, use your phone. The phones are amazing. I have the, I always buy the Max Pro for an iPhone because you have the three cameras and you can do like a cinematic. So it's like blurry in the background and you're in focus. Mm -hmm. Such an easy tool. You literally always have it on you all the time. So there's no excuse. It's not like, oh, I don't have my camera with me. It's like, right. yes, you do. it's in your pocket. I just grab that. The second thing I say is kind of mean, but it's true. Your first few videos are going <laughs> to suck and it is what it is. And that's yeah. okay. And then the third thing I say, and if you're insecure, because like no one wants to watch themselves on camera because it's so mm -hmm. weird. We know what you look like. We know what you sound like. So put those insecurities aside. It is what it is. Your first video is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. You're going to sound weird and look weird to yourself because you're not used to it. But after like 10 videos, you're going to get really comfortable. After 25 videos, you're way more comfortable. After 100 videos, you don't even think about it. You just press record. Those are like three kind of softer tips, really. And then as far as like, okay, here's what you need to do. When I first started, I made sure I wrote down a beginning, a middle and an end because I realized when I would press record and that blinking light and the, it's so it gets Dude, in the it, it takes you from Tom Cruise to Elmer Fudd instantly. So quickly. And I know how to speak. Why can't I get these <laughs> words out? Like I know my business. I know these things. I always say that like, I just wrote it down for years. Honestly, it's probably like in the last couple of years where I don't do that anymore. Right. And endings it's really hard to end you really have to be mm. well thought out because it's easy to trail off and i was like oh, i trailed off again i trailed off again so i always say like especially in the beginning get your beginning your middle like your main point and then make sure you have an, a conclusion because uh -huh. so many times you're just like oh, anyway yeah that's basically uh, what, you know what i was talking about you don't know how to end it that think, is yeah. something to tell think about it from your own point of view anytime you see these videos and they just kind of yeah, you're 100% right. They just kind of trail off. There's no nothing to tie it all in. I was listening to, I don't know if there's any Saturday Night Live fans out there. I was listening to a Fly on the Wall podcast with Dana Carvey mm -hmm. and David Spade. And they were talking about how important it is for these SNL skits that have a tie-in, that have an ending. Like these writers that were just trying to get on the show but specialize in writing the endings. And if you uh -huh. ever think about a Saturday Night Live skit that was hilarious, but then it ended weird. It didn't end weird. It just ended because they didn't write an ending. And that's what you remember about it. Yeah, that's interesting. I should listen to that because that's something I would like a deep dive or anything like that into it. Sure. But I'm just like, oh, conclusions, man. I more notice it in person when someone's speaking. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just when they have that conclusion, they just hit it out of the park. Like they tie in everything with one that's statement. Right. I'm just like, dang that was good. So that's what I'm trying to do. Actually, that's something I'm actively working on, especially for my in-person presentations. Mm -hmm. When you're, do you tell people to use a teleprompter or tell them to have a bullet points or tell them to have nothing? Okay. I don't love the teleprompter, although there's an app I w once in a while will use, especially if it's a little bit more technical and it's not as conversational, but I find a lot of what I've been doing lately with some clients is I'll ask off screen the question. I try and be prepared for everyone because again, once that flashing light's happening and especially like it's bad enough when I set it up and I'm recording myself, but having one or two or three people looking at you with their camera, like in your face and you're trying to yeah. think these things to say is so hard. What I've been saying to people is I'm going to ask you a couple questions and you just answer it. 
like for you, I might be like, hey, why is video so beneficial to a brand? And they'll be like, oh, it's beneficial because, mm -hmm. and you're able to talk to me as a human because it's conversational and it's easier to forget that the cameras are there as opposed to being like, okay, start talking in three, two, one. It's a little more intense that way. I agree with you a hundred percent. Too many people that, and I like a teleprompter for different reasons, Yeah. Uh, but too many videos I've seen look like hostage videos where so you can see their eyes darting across and they are reading what they wrote themselves and their inflection is all just off. And yeah. I've seen it where somebody will go back and lightly edit and they'll put a little flash across the screen, black background, white letters. Tell us more about social media for the year 2025 coming up. And then they'll just answer it. And it's, it feels way more fluid than trying to either a wing it, which never seems to go well, end yeah. up with conclusions or reading like you're never coming home. Yeah. And there's such a thing in my opinion as like over preparation. Oh, so, yeah. cause then it takes the personality out of it. And I've done that too. Like I've talked so much about one specific video that I'm like, Oh, delete that. I'm just going to have to come back to it. Cause it, it made me, it just took away my personality, you know? And that's what people connect to, especially mm -hmm. online. You want to build that trust and that's how you to do it. Just be like, here's me. Here's how I talk. I'm a fast talker. I'm never going to be slow and methodical. Like I try, I write a note to myself before every interview, like talk slow. I can't. <laughs> so it's just I, like, yeah. make it, don't like it. it doesn't matter. I've got the polar opposite problem as you could probably <laughs> tell, but dude, I'm telling you that the most painful thing I ever did was this audio book, having to record it because you can't wing it and you can't. Do you have to read it word for word and then go yeah. going back and editing it. You don't want to like the sound of your own voice, do it for five straight hours. And then it takes 10 hours to edit it. I, it, it was the worst thing I've ever had to do. That's funny. Yeah. I believe that. Trying to wrap up kind of this point of the discussion real quick and then say, wrap it up. All of this kind of leads into sharing your content. And there's a million and one ways to share, obviously. And the most common questions that I get are, these magical quick wins on social media because people also feel like they should, as soon as you post that video that you put your heart and soul in, it should get a hundred likes. And if it doesn't, it wasn't worth it. What do you tell these folks or what do you tell them a quick win might be, but then what do you tell them the long-term strategy should be? Okay. So quick win is if you do get a handful of likes and some comments, I always tell people you're not going viral, especially in this day and age. Four years ago, it was easy to go viral because we didn't have the competition. Now it's a lot harder. Uh, and if you're a vacuum shop, you're not going viral. If you're like <laughs> insurance, you're probably not going viral. And that's right. okay because that doesn't necessarily translate into sales. And that's why we're in this game. Right. What I tell people is just like have realistic expectations. You're, again, your first few videos, you're going to have maybe 20 views, maybe 100 views. And that's okay because imagine if you're standing in a room and 100 people were like giving you their full attention, right? Like I would feel good about that's that. That's awesome. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. And then when you do it so consistently, say you post every single day for 30 days, when you look at your analytics behind the scenes, so it's easy to look at a specific video and be like, oh, that wasn't worth it. But then on YouTube, I love their analytics because they'll be like, you had 9.6 hours of watch time. So something yeah. that took 10 minutes to do got 10 hours of marketing. I shot the quick video, I did that, boom, sent it out, went on with my day. And in one week, people can still be learning from that. Uh, the second thing I tell people is just because the numbers aren't necessarily there online and you might have lower numbers, people are still watching. So mm -hmm. within the last week, I had three people be like, <clears throat> I watch every single one of your videos and they don't like anything and they never comment. So I had no clue. They're like, yeah, they're so helpful. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much. And I wanted to be like, then put it online, man. <laughs> All <laughs> month people have been telling me this is so weird. And I'm just like, okay, good. That's what I want to hear. I want, I'm putting out my information to help people. And then past that, I've had people be like, hey, I've been watching your videos for a month. I know you know what you're talking about. Let's talk business. So the sale was already made because they already trust me. And I'm never viral. I'm not getting 100,000 views, but I'm getting 10 hours of watch time on a video or I'm getting three comments, but hey, I got five calls from that one video. That's where you have to measure it correctly. That's what I tell people. Long-term strategy is consistency. We always talk about this. Consistency is key. You do it for a year. People are going to believe you're the expert. Even for me with the SEO stuff, I think it was May. I'm going to focus all my content on SEO because I wanted to boost that side of my business. All my blogs were about SEO and all my videos were about SEO. And guess what? I got like five new SEO clients and a bunch of new calls for SEO. Why? Because I was putting it out there, telling people what I do, as opposed to usually random, like, hey, I'm thinking about this today. Oh, I have this thought. Oh, with this. I'm going to be really intentional, just mm -hmm. flood the market with SEO. And it, it paid dividends. Now, none of those SEO videos probably even have more than like 300 views because 
who wants to know about that? It's not a popular yeah. subject, but it didn't matter because now I'm making money from that. And that's what I want from my videos. And that advice that you just gave, you actually gave that advice to me a few weeks ago because I've been doing, I made it a point, I'm doing LinkedIn lives every day if for no other reason so I can make sure that I can speak quickly and efficiently because if you don't, you don't lose it. You don't use it, you lose it. See like right then. But I managed to take a look at that and wasn't really getting like likes and comments. And then what you had said is like, yeah, but the generation that I'm targeting is watching that they might not be doing a lot of likes and comments. So then I yeah. went and looked at minutes viewed and a three minute LinkedIn live I did over the course of a week was viewed some 30 minutes, some 45 minutes. And that's how I looked at it. Like, well, man, each day I've got X number of people watching mm -hmm. for 45 minutes. That's such an easy, quick win for me for something that takes five minutes to do. I know exactly. And th that's the other thing too, that you just touched on. The more, so it is discouraging and that's why a lot of people quit. So if you keep doing it, your competition is going to get discouraged and they're going to stop putting their name out there and you aren't. You're going to continue getting those 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes, 120 minutes. And that's what's going to bring the sales and your brand will definitely build that way. I totally get it because we are a measuring, going back to the fitness thing, I was discouraged because in my generation, it was all like the scale, the scale, the scale, not necessarily about muscle. And the lady was like, oh my, oh no, actually this young girl from my office, she's like 20 something. She's like, oh, you old people on the scale. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, what do you mean? She's like, well, you just said you're discouraged because your weight stayed the same, but your clothes are fitting better and your before and after picture, you saw right. change. And I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, you're just like my mom. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is so insulting. Go on. And it, basically I was kind of upset because of the stupid number, but meanwhile, all these other things were happening in my life that I'm lifting heavier. I'm enjoying working out like all these cool things, but that stupid number. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just like my business. People are focused on that stupid number. Ooh. They're not seeing all these benefits over here. And I'm like, that's, that's me in the gym. Interesting. So we just are obsessed with numbers as a society. Honestly, we want to see that thing like shrink or grow. And when we don't, we get discouraged. And that's what I see. Everyone's just like getting discouraged. They're stopping the content creation, but they don't, you're focusing on the wrong number. Look at mm -hmm. it over here. So that's, that's a good, that's a good piece of content you can create from that. I from will. That analogy. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a quick switch out of this and into uh, something, I don't know, a little more difficult or fun. I always like to ask people, what is something that you should be doing less of right now in your business or life? Less of in my business yeah. or life? That's a really good question. I want to stop personally, like my next hire, I kind of want it to be a videographer. So I'm not Ooh. the one shooting my own podcast and editing it because it does take a long time. Like the interview portion takes like whatever, half an hour, 45 minutes, however long it is. Then you have the research, which I don't mind doing, but it's then it's the after. It's like breaking it down into the content pieces and doing all these things. And for my clients, I get all the girls that work with me, they do that. But for my own stuff, I do it myself. And the other day I was like, it'd be really cool to have a videographer. Like, mm -hmm. not that I want to be Gary Vee or anything like that, but it's just would be kind of nice to have them always thinking about the content as opposed to me. So that would be really neat. It'd be cool to stop spending so, so much time it, editing my own so stuff. If you spend less time doing that, well, will that allow you to do more of? I'm hoping sales and networking. Right now, I feel like I'm at my max with memberships I'm a part of. I'm on a few boards and I can't do another thing. So another cool opportunity came up and I wanted to say, yeah, but I can't, man, I can't give up another evening because I have like three kids and I, my whole life isn't my business. It's a cool aspect of my life. It's not the goal of my life. And so I want to keep that in perspective. Okay. If I want to say yes to something cool, something has to give over here. But maybe if I wasn't spending so much time in my business, these things, I could do them. So it's just stuff like that. Yeah. That I know that's a perfect answer. So to wrap up, thank you. <laughs> hey, say we got to come up with conclusions here. I know. I just in my head, I'm like, you're you're trailing, you're trailing. You just talked about that. I'm like, I have nothing to say. I just hey, it was perfect. I normally ask a more complicated question about books and people you haven't met, but going back to the workout, what's your favorite workout? My favorite workout, I really like weights, like lifting okay. weights. So the reason I got into lifting weights is because I had a major back injury. March, 2020, right before COVID shut down everything oh, in Canada. Gosh. And I was in the hospital for a week and then I was on my back for like three or four weeks. And my doctor was, you need to lose weight and you need to get strong and your core is horrible and stuff like that. I was like, oh, didn't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 
she's a mean doctor. No, it was true. People are like, okay, you're right. I probably like I sit all day and stuff like that. Anyway, so I started looking into how like once I got better, I don't want to do that again. What do I need to do? So then this I read a lot about lifting weights, which made me nervous because yeah, lifting something heavy is what put me in that position to start. So anyway, I joined a workout thing and I've just been loving it ever since. It's hard to go sometimes. Like, and I said, mm -hmm. my husband's like, oh, you're so dedicated. That's amazing. I wish I liked going to the gym. I was like, whoa, whoa. I don't like going to the gym. Like 35, 40% of the time, I'm like, I'm ready to go. But the other 60, I'm like, because oh, I have to go to a class and I signed up for, but you can't just cancel. But yeah, so lifting weights is really fun and it's cool to see the gross. I'm more like, instead of, I was never a workout person because I like sports. I like playing basketball and I played soccer like my whole life. It just stopped during COVID. My team kind of shut down through that. I'm more active that way. This is cool because you're still hitting, like you're, just, you're growing. It's really cool. I started with like dying at 10 pounds each hand. Mm -hmm. Now I was 12 and there was 15, like chest presses, you know, I started at 15. Now I'm doing 220s, stuff like that. So it's just cool to grow and to see the progress that way. I'll completely second you on that. My knees are completely shot. I've had mm -hmm. surgery on both knees, one of them twice, stem cells in one twice and in the other. Their future is a knee replacement from years of basketball, but lifting weights over the past couple of years still put me in probably some of the better, maybe not cardio vascularly, but in, in the best yeah. shape of my life was picking up some heavy weights. It's just, and it's fun. And your brain like shuts off. That's the other yeah. thing. I, I did not realize how my brain was like always going until I hit that gym. Okay. Concentrate, like don't bend weird. Don't bend with your back. I'm going through these things in my head mm -hmm. as I'm lifting. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I did not think about work for half an hour straight. And my brain just like focused on this one thing that I was doing. Oh, it's just crazy. Although I still don't love going. So I don't know. It sounds good here because I didn't work out today. I was fine. Tomorrow <laughs> morning, I'm like, oh, heading to the gym. So you will grow, and any you'll, tricep you'll exercise. Grow. Yeah. I'm loving the tricep exercises because I have they one now. Up. I never had one before. <laughs> That's fun. Sure. Yeah, how can, some, what do you like? how can somebody find you? Find me on any platform you can google my name sherry barna i also have a sherry barna but she died in a car accident don't go to the obituary that's not me uh, or purple bean media everywhere pretty much google purple bean you'll find sherry and she'll be in a great shape and ready to tell you about all the all the other content and seo things Sherry, thank you for coming on and hanging out with me today i appreciate you having me thanks so much i always love talking to you see that was a good conclusion all right we'll chat later thanks Bye. Wait, wait, don't run off just yet. Do me a big favor, hit the little plus sign to subscribe, scroll down wherever you are and leave a very honest five-star review and tell other people why they should be listening. And if you don't, an angel may in fact lose its wings. True story. Have a great day.